The Milwaukee Journal Sentinel's Preps Plus is brought to you by Boston Store, your store, your style. By Frederick and the Medical College of Wisconsin Health Network, providing sports medicine expertise to high school athletes and teams. And by Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. We're at Elon Soccer Park in Milwaukee, site of the WIAA State Tournament. Hi and welcome, I'm Mark Stewart, prep editor of the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. And I'm Lance Allen from today's TMJ4. Mark, we have plenty of different sports represented today. Volleyball, a salute to the state cross country champions, and of course, plenty of football playoff action. But we start right here on the pitch. University School entered the tournament with a terrific record. And one of the state's top scorers. Brad Preter introduces us to the Boston Store Featured Student Athlete. You don't have to be at practice for long to see that Nate Sampson has a powerful shot. I've never played with a player quite like Nate. I mean, I give him the ball and he, he just really does the rest. As Sampson and his university school teammates got ready for the state tournament, Nate ranked fifth in the state in goals scored. His ability to contort his body, he's physically strong and uh, he can put the defender on his back very easily. He's incredibly powerful. And then um, he's got a, a wicked shot. We try to do our best to sort of support him, make runs off, try to draw as many defenders off him because that's really what it comes down to. But uh, he can take on a whole team if he needs to, you know, a whole back four. This year marked the second WIAA state tournament appearance for Sampson. He was a freshman when the Wildcats won the Division IV championship two years ago. I remember my freshman year, the way the seniors kind of took me in, because I was the only starter that wasn't a senior. We had 10 senior starters, and I was getting back. We have a lot of young guys that are really important in our team, so I think as an upperclassman, uh, I think we all really tried to make them feel like part of the team, just like the seniors did for me. Sampson drew a lot of attention from opponents. He had scored 45 goals heading into the state tourney, an average of two and a half goals per game while helping the Wildcats win the Midwest Classic Conference Championship. Even with his lofty numbers, Sampson gives plenty of credit to his teammates. The way our team works, we have like a lot of different ways that we can attack, so we're really dangerous from all kinds of areas. And the way my teammates are able to find me in a lot of different ways and just make my job a lot easier. While opponents have trouble dealing with Sampson's shots, so too do his teammates during training. And it doesn't help when it's getting dark by the time practice is winding down. Our goalie, Chris Gibb, always wonders during captain's practice and everything, like, how do you get so good? Every time he dribbles through, like, five players, megs a few on the way, maybe beats a guy twice. Uh, we, we wonder what he did. He's just like, I don't know. I, I'm, just, I'm just playing. So. Sampson did the bulk of the Wildcats scoring because that was best for the team this season. But his coach says Nate can do much more than that. He's a natural midfielder, really, and he has an incredible um, ability or facility to distribute the ball and uh, he's a natural passer. Sampson admits he felt pressure to score but he didn't mind that at all. Yeah there's a lot of pressure but I, I think I play better under pressure so I really enjoy it. While Nate excels on the field he's also a strong student and his coach says he represents his school well. I think he's a the quintessential University School of Milwaukee student in that he's uh, mature, intelligent, uh, respectful and uh, he really is a delight to coach. He really receives instruction well and applies it immediately. By the way, Nate says basketball was actually his number one sport until about eighth grade, but now he's focusing on soccer. Darkness had fallen on one of the Wildcats' final practices when Coach Jock Mutchler presented Nate with his feature student athlete plaque, courtesy of Boston School. <laughs> Hi, I'm Corey Lindsley of the Green Bay Packers. Stick around, Lance and Mark will be right back. Can't find the size, color, or brand you're looking for in store? Let us find it at Boston Store. Simply tell a sales associate what item you're looking for, and we'll search our entire inventory of stores and websites to locate your exact size, color, and brand. Complete your transaction in store, and your purchase will be delivered right to your door at no extra charge. It couldn't be easier when you let us find it. Exclusively at Boston Store. 
no matter what your schedule, personality, or lifestyle. Our primary care providers do everything possible to make every day a little healthier. It all begins by listening and getting to know you. It's about convenience with flexible hours and locations near you. And it's about connections linking you to the power of academic medicine right in your community. For a primary care provider who gets you, get to us. Menards has the sale that lets you save big on over 65,000 items. So get ready. Get set and save with an 11% rebate on everything. Hurry in and save big because now is the perfect time to save on all of your projects with an 11% rebate on everything, including sale prices. That's savings on top of savings. Get everything you need with an 11% rebate going on now. We're back at Eline Soccer Park on Preps Plus, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel's high school sports show. And Mark, while the local soccer teams were here at state, the local football teams were working toward the state finals. Let's start the action in Division I, where we've got a pair of huge matchups for you in the Preps Plus highlights. The last three seasons have been quite the roller coaster ride for Oconomowoc. In 2013, they finished 11 and 1. Last year, just 1 and 8, with a lot of injuries. And this year, they're perfect through 11 games. Tonight, their toughest opponent by far here in the 2015 season, as they welcome Arrowhead, last year's state runner-up. There was an overflow crowd in Oconomowoc, but it was the Warhawks who made themselves right at home. Opening drive, Arrowhead QB Johnny Duranso was back from injury and he looked as good as ever. Here he caps the march with this keeper. Warhawks jump out 7-0. Now early second, Duranso goes one way, then reverses for the score. Arrowhead up 14. Later in the half, Duranso shares the wealth with this arching pass to Tyler Jones. Hawks are flying away, up 21-0. On to the final play of the first half. Arrowhead looking for the dagger, but the Raccoons dig deep and the deficit remains at 21. But that goal line stand was a huge boost of confidence for Oconomowoc, and it carried them in the second half. Opening drive, Jacob Rams will not be denied on this six yard run, Cooney down 21-7. Next Raccoon possession, QB Ben Neinheis with the screen to Rams, and he strolls in. The Arrowhead lead is just a touchdown. Now in the fourth, the comeback is complete. Ram scores his third touchdown of the half, and incredibly, we are even at 21. The Warhawks finally get their offense in gear, but Spencer Papandrea coughs it up, and Jonah Landowski recovers. Cooney moves in the field goal range, but Carson Roseleap's kick is just wide, giving Arrowhead one last drive in a tie game, and Duranso takes full advantage. With under 10 seconds to play, he rolls out and hits Nick Bastine with a perfect toss for the game winner. The Warhawks advance to face Franklin with a nail-biting 28-21 victory. We've had a tough road ahead of us at the end of the game, but then we just kind of grind it out at the end because uh, Coach uh, describes us as uh, blue-collared. So, I mean, that's what we do. We just grind and grind and grind. Oh, you know, it, it felt a little... I was kind of here and there about that, you know, it's my senior year, didn't want it to end. And once we got that last drive, I knew we weren't going to, it wasn't going to end right there. I knew we were going to get in and win. Bring it pizza! The path to Camp Randall only gets tougher each week. And in this third round of the WIAA football playoffs, matches up the two top teams in the area. The number one ranked team, the Franklin Sabres, play host to the number two team in the Milwaukee General Signal, the Muskego Warriors. And from the start, Franklin defense made its presence felt. Sabres defensive lineman Latron Spruer gets the quarterback sack. On Muskego's second offensive series, the Warriors quarterback Caleb Wagner drops back when he will get picked off by Franklin's defensive back Ben Wachter for the pick six. That made it 14 zip Sabres. 
Late in the second quarter, Muskego's offense started to show some life. Wagner hits Alex Kaysling for the first down. Three plays later, running back Aiden Malcolmson finds his way into the end zone, making it 21-7. The Sabres will answer right back on this beautiful catch here by Gage Couch. Now it's 28-7, going into halftime. Franklin will start the second half with this big play, Andrew Haas' 30-yard catch and run. That sets up this 10-yard run by Gavin Beck. Franklin wins big 42-15. Here are the Sabres after the game. It, it all started with that D-line. I told them from the beginning, we're going to win in the trenches, and that's what happened. They pushed them back farther, and uh, they didn't let the really let the whole line get to the linebackers, and that allowed me and Drew Reinick in the secondary to get to, into different plays. I'm a defensive guy, and, and uh, when I became head coach, I said, uh, we're going to put some players on that side of the ball, and, and we have some players. We have some kids that are going to be playing on Saturday afternoons in the future. Uh, got some pretty special kids there. There's so much action this week that we're doubling up on this next segment. Matt Queen delivers playoff highlights in Divisions 2 and 3. Here are the Menards Games of the Week. We're in Mequon at Homestead High School for this Division 2 playoff matchup between the Highlanders and Brookfield East. The Spartans got here by knocking off their rivals Brookfield Central in an overtime thriller. A win here Friday night would send them to the state semifinals for the first time ever. Meanwhile, Homestead's been there before, trying to get back to the state semis for the second year in a row. It was Homestead who gained the early advantage, but only after avoiding disaster. Eric Zeller's pass underthrown. Lance Dismukes has the interception, but it bounces off his hands right to Homestead's Jack Pop, 7-zip. Ensuing drive, fourth and three in Homestead territory, an East bowling ball of a back, Sam Santiago Lloyd stuffed. The Homestead D holds. Second quarter, set up by a pass interference penalty, Matt Winters scores and it's 14-0 Homestead. Would East still run the ball down two touchdowns? Of course they would. They have Sam Santiago Lloyd punishing anybody who gets in his way. The drive capped off by this TC Swiddle keeper, East on the board at 14-6. Before halftime, it's another two-yard TD run from Winters. He had 129 yards on the night, and it's 21-6 Homestead at the half. Same score late in the third quarter. When Santiago Lloyd gets in, he had 271 yards, 21-13. Then in the fourth, after a Homestead turnover, it's T.C. Swiddle up the middle. Two-pointer no good, but Brookfield East closes the gap to 21-19. However, Homestead regains control and puts the game away. Bradley Wolt around the right end, 19-yard touchdown run, a two-score game now at 28-19. And then the cherry on top, Michael Fehrenbach, as Homestead wins 35-25. They'll play Chippewa Falls for the right to move on to the state championship game. I'm proud of our kids and proud of our coordinators, two new, three new coordinators, all three are new, and our kids adapted, you know, they adapted, and that's what good, good kids do, they're resilient, and I'm really proud of what they've done. Going back to last season, we, I mean, we lost in level four last year, and our goal is to get back here and win this game. I mean, you know, it's in all of our minds, we lost a tough one last year, and goal is to get to state. Now to Division Three. it's the rematch Kewaskum was hoping for. The Indians host Catholic Memorial, the team which eliminated them in level two last fall. But Kewaskum fans did not want to see this. One of the state's top rushers, Brandon Thull, helped off the field on the first series of the night. He would not return. Kewaskum, though, puts together a steady drive, and they strike when Steven Nurkula crashes across the goal line to make it 7-0 Indians. Deep in its own territory, Catholic Memorial's Alex Bray fires to Max Cooper. Everyone's gonna chase him, but no one's gonna get to him. This long touchdown ties it, and the Crusaders take the lead on a field goal late in the half. They get the ball to start the second half and march with the help of a couple connections between Bray and Fletcher Metz. The Crusaders cash in when Bray hits Max Cooper for his second TD, and Catholic Memorial leads it 17-7. Kewaskum responds with a drive of their own. Michael Prock now looks for Charlie Wittick, and he hauls it in. Indians back within three, but the Memorial defense would buckle down in the fourth quarter, and the Crusaders win it 17-14. Kewaskum's season ends with a record of 11-1, while Catholic Memorial advances to face Reedsburg in the Division Three semifinals. 
Of course, in our next episode, we're going to have highlights of the state semifinals in football. But until then, for more info on the playoffs, you can go to jsonline.com or mycommunitynow.com slash push. And you can also follow Preps Plus on social media as well. Stick around. We'll be right back. joint pain like a warning light in your car. It means something in your body isn't working right or could be damaged. And the Freight Art and the Medical College of Wisconsin Health Network is where you go to keep everything in working order. Our orthopedic and spine specialists will show you all your options from non-surgical remedies like physical therapy to minimally invasive treatments and advanced surgical techniques to get you going again. Isn't it good to know what is possible? Lindsley was a fifth round draft pick who immediately became a starter for one of the NFL's elite teams. The Packers second year center is our guest in this week's edition of From Preps to Pros. Just listen to your coaches, work hard. Um, don't act like you know it all because next thing you know you're, you're, you're going to realize you don't, you know, so just um, Absorb as much as you can, take in as much as you can, and work hard. Put your head down, work hard. Packers center Corey Lindsley has good advice for high school athletes looking to get better. A team captain and second team all state selection in football, Corey also excelled at the shot put and discus. He says that track and field experience helped him on the football field. You know, anything that works with, the, you know, the foot speed and everything, and that's that's what uh, most track was about. And, um, you know, for me, I probably could have done more flexibility with it, but, you know, I was kind of a meat in high school, so I didn't, um, I just took it, the foot, got the footwork out of it to translate it over to football, but regardless, it was a fun thing to do. Lindsley's biggest memory from high school is a double overtime victory in which Corey made the play his coach told him he needed to make. And he looks at me, he's like, you got to get your reach block. And he, he says to our running back, he's like, you got to make your block. He goes, we're going for two, we're ending this thing, we're not going anymore. And, um, and I, I had the best reach block of my life. And <laughs> pancake the dude in the end zone, my buddy comes up, smacks the linebacker, and then we scored. And then I yeah, had a big celebration and everything. It was pretty cool. A fifth round draft choice out of Ohio State last year, Lindsley stepped into the starting spot at center as a rookie because of an injury to J.C. Tratter. Lindsley says his teammates were totally supportive. When I stepped in there last year, I felt, I didn't feel comfortable, but I felt um, a sense of relaxation from everybody else that um, they had confidence in me, but they were also there um, for me to lean on when I, when I didn't do as well or when I didn't, wasn't sure of the call, wasn't sure what was going on. The guy who snaps the ball to Aaron Rodgers better be a true pro, right? Lindsley says a pro is someone who doesn't have to be told twice to do something. There might not always be someone watching over him, but he knows if he doesn't get the work done, the coaches will know. If you don't want to lift weights or do the work in the offseason, it's going to show up. You know, they're not going to wait for you to, to get back into shape or get, get your strength back or anything. And you're expected, you're expected to do that now because you're a professional. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Coming off the ball. Coming off the ball. What a day it was for Pewaukee's boys and girls teams at the WIAA State Cross Country Championships. Allie Dudek catches up with these championship squads. Here are your Preps Plus teams of the week. For the first time ever, a Division II school cleans up at state. Pewaukee High School brought home both the girls and the boys state championships. 
It's really special. I mean, this program, the girls program's always been really good, but just to add a boys championship to that and to do it at the same time, it really solidifies our spot as like the top Division II program in the, in the state right now as a whole. We just wanted to do it all together as one team. That's what we talked about the night before is just the fact that we had this opportunity to do boys and girls and that was their goal. Just to do it as one team is amazing, but for both teams to do it in the same year is just an incredible accomplishment. Not many teams can say that, especially in Division II, no one can. The girls claimed their state title nearly two hours before the boys started their run, which only provided extra motivation for the Pirates to take home both titles. After they saw us winning, you could, they just wanted to win and we knew we could do it. It was our goal and I feel like that also pushed them to just say let's do it. So when they won it was really cool and we just kind of said you know we got to get back to business. We were here to do one thing and that's to win. The boys team brought home their first ever state title which they say has been a work in progress over the past few years. Coach Cation instilled a winning mindset for his team from early on. You guys are going to win conference and win state. I said not this year but in the future and then they just kept working towards that and they didn't kind of believe it and this year they went believing that that was what was going to happen. We didn't have a lot of the pieces back then and over the past few years we've gotten those pieces. We've all improved as individuals and now obviously we won that title. His vision came true and that's largely in part to how we've developed over the years. Although Coach had a plan for the boys team, he was slightly concerned about the shortage of girls this year. I'm saying you got to find more girls, we got to find more girls. and. And they kept saying, Coach, I think we're better than you think we are. We just put the hard work in every day. We had the goals, we had, and then we had the coaches backing us up, giving us confidence and that we should be um, setting high goals because we are capable of it. What better way for a freshman to enter the season than to go to state? So when we won, it was just that moment where it hit you and you're like, wow, you're a state champion. Congratulations, Pewaukee Cross Country boys and girls for being part of history and our team of the week. Stick around, we have highlights of the boys volleyball sectional finals. That's coming up next on Preps Plus. Can't find the size, color, or brand you're looking for in store? Let us find it at Boston Store. Simply tell a sales associate what item you're looking for and we'll search our entire inventory of stores and websites to locate your exact size, color, and brand. Complete your transaction in store and your purchase will be delivered right to your door at no extra charge. It couldn't be easier when you let us find it. Exclusively at Boston Store. Get ready, get set, and save with an 11% rebate on everything at Menards. This Conway Chrome Finish Bath Faucet from Moen is only $69 after rebate. A Verese Brushed Nickel Finish Faucet is just $84 after rebate. Save big on this H2O Kinetics 5 Function Chrome Finish Shower Head by Delta. Featuring a soothing wave pattern spray, just $34 after rebate. Get everything you need with an 11% rebate going on now. It's important for an athlete to eat properly on game day so they feel energized and their muscles are ready to work. An athlete needs adequate carbohydrate and protein throughout the day and that does start with breakfast. So at breakfast they could do cereal and milk which does have the carbs as well as the protein in it. They could also do cereal, fruit and yogurt which also gives them those elements. At lunch they could do a sandwich with maybe some pretzels and fruit. And then before the game they want to do more carbohydrate and a little bit of protein which could be again cereal, fruit and yogurt. Hydration is really important before a game and that does start at breakfast. At breakfast they should take in about 16 to 24 ounces of fluid, at lunch 16 to 24 ounces, and right before the game about 8 to 12 ounces. Hydration is really important post game and that could look like chocolate milk which has carbohydrate and protein in it for proper refueling. For more information visit freighter.com slash sports. The WIAA Boys State Volleyball Tournament is this Friday and Saturday at Wisconsin Lutheran College. We'll see how one local team qualified for state in the Preps Plus Spotlight.
The road to the state tournament looks like a very clear one for Kettle Moraine. The Lasers are the number one team in the state. They've already won the Classic A championship, and they defeated Catholic Memorial earlier this season. But the Crusaders are a very dangerous foe. They've been to the state tournament the past five seasons. Memorial was just 9-15 in the regular season, but caught fire when it counts, winning three playoff matchups, and they carried that momentum early. Peter Aspenson with the set, and Zach Ensberg with this rocket, Crusaders up 11-6. Then it's Joe Hireman with this perfect shot, CMH up by seven looking for the upset. But the Lasers storm back in a big way. They go on a 10 to one run. Here the shot by David Waltz is too hot to handle. Later it's Alex Dahlman with this monster kill. Kettle Moraine rallies to take game one, 25-22. No let up for the Lasers in game two. Hireman goes up, but Connor Lilly is there for the huge rejection. KM is up 11-5. Later it's Dahlman climbing the ladder and slamming home this winner. The Lasers take game two, 25-18. On to game three, and the state's top team will not be denied. Lilly hits this vicious drive that gets through, KM up 12-5. Then the junior shows his versatility as this serve has pinpoint accuracy, and the laser bench loves it. Later, it's Waltz with this tomahawk as the home team is pulling away. Finally, on game point, the Crusaders serve is wide and the Lasers are state-bound. Kettle Moraine claims the sectional crown as they sweep Catholic Memorial. It feels good. We've lost in the sectional finals for the past two years and we finally made it. It's just the best feeling. It's nice. We're playing our best volleyball of the season right now and we're all confident. It's just, we just gotta go out and do it. We just have really good team chemistry. We've been playing together for a while. Um, we all trust in our coaches. We just have a real good team morale right now and we're playing at a real high level. They've really built their own kind of, this is what we're going to be known for. And they play some defense and they block well and serve well and they're just a fun group of kids. That's a wrap for tonight, Mark. But next week, we'll bring you right back here to E-Line for the state soccer championship match highlights. Plus football highlights and, of course, much more. Till next time, I'm Mark Stewart. And I'm Lance Allen. See you next week on Preps Plus. The Milwaukee Journal Sentinel's Preps Plus is brought to you by Boston Store. Your store, your style. By Friedrich and the Medical College of Wisconsin Health Network providing sports medicine expertise to high school athletes and teams. And by Menards, dedicated to service and quality.